Hello everyone. Uh, for today's lab, besides talking about connectors and cables, I'm going to introduce you to a new instrument, new for most of you probably, and this is the uh, RF power meter. Uh, the unit we're going to look at is called the, uh, this is Hewlett Packard 437B. Uh, it's also the Agilent 437B and Agilent has recently changed to uh, Keysight Technologies. So, but if you search HP 437B, you'll probably find it on the web. Now what's interesting about the power meter is it's, a, it's an instrument that's fairly unique to RF measurements. So why do we even use an, a power meter? Why aren't we measuring voltage? Why aren't we measuring current? Well, voltage, and in, we're used to measuring voltage with scopes, but think about measuring a high frequency signal. We're going to measure signals in the 1 to 2 gigahertz and maybe even higher range. If you're thinking about an oscilloscope measuring a sine wave, normally we have at least 10 samples per second, or per cycle, sorry. 10 samples per cycle in order to display the sine wave on the scope. Well, if we have a 1 gigahertz signal, that would mean we would need to sample at 10 gigahertz. That is a very fast and high performance instrument. And while scopes have gotten better and better and better every year, that is still a very uh, unique instrument and not one we have. I think the highest sampling scope we might have is a gigahertz. Maybe a little faster, but we will see. So, we will switch to power measurements. Okay, so why, what is the advantage of using power as a measurement? Well, the big advantage is that instead of sampling the individual voltage points on the waveform, you can look at the total waveform and its power. And, and then work backwards to, uh, to surmise the voltage. So, how do we measure power? Well, normally we think of power as V times I. But we're going to measure it in a unique manner using this sensor that comes with and is attached to the, uh, currently attached to the power meter. This power sensor actually converts the RF signal to heat and we measure the heat and since heat is related to power power and energy, we can get an idea of the signal level by measuring essentially the temperature developed in this sensor. This is a specialized temperature sensor. Um, sometimes they call them, there there's different types. Some of them are called bolometers. Some of them use thermistors. Some of them use thermocouples. That doesn't really matter to us. The idea is that the RF signal develops temperature, we measure the temperature rise, and temperature is related back to power. Another unique thing about the uh, power meter is that we, when you measure power, you're going to need a reference. So built into this unit, you can see there is a power reference. It's one milliwatt at 50 megahertz. So inside the instrument, there is a one, mega, a one milliwatt 50 megahertz source. That makes it easy to calibrate at the beginning, which we will need to do. All right, so when we start the instrument, it's pretty straightforward. Push the on button, you see some numbers come up, it's doing a self check, checking its interface, and you will see that the reading is to the left or zero. We're reading 0.22 microwatts. Okay? So, uh, what we're going to do first is just press the preset, the green button. When we do that, press the enter to follow. It's presetting and it's doing a measurement 
and it says that is equivalent to minus 37 dBm. If you press the dBm milliwatts button or dBm watts button, you will see it's 0.15 microwatts. You can actually set that to zero if you want by just pressing the zero button and it'll go through the zeroing because obviously we haven't we have nothing coming into our sensor so we're at zero but it's not really necessary usually after the uh, green button preset uh, you're good enough if I check the milliwatts again it's minus 49 so it did change there so worth doing okay now we are going to measure the signal by turning on the power reference so underneath there's a there a, above this button labeled in blue it's a little hard to see it says power reference so we're going to press the blue button and then power reference and immediately you see the needle go to maximum okay now if we look at the uh, reading it now says 0 dBm if I switch to milliwatts it's reading 0.992 okay so we need to calibrate that so we're gonna press the cal button shift cal right and it tells us our calibration reference is uh, at this level or this frequency hundred percent you can see the flashing number that means we can adjust that so where do we get that number well built in to the sensor there are numbers so you can see at 0.1 gigahertz, this says the cal factor percentage is 100.1. So that number should really be 100.1. So we will switch over to here. We will raise that button. Now it says 100.1. 100 megahertz, which is 0.1 gigahertz, is very close to our 50 megahertz uh, reference. So that will be good enough. So we'll enter that data. Okay, so now they, it recalibrates and we see 0 dBm, uh, 1.001 milliwatt. So that's 1 milliwatt and 1 microwatt. That's close enough for us at this point. Okay, uh, other frequencies can be calibrated if needed um, up, up to 18 gigahertz. But since we'll be working below 2 gigahertz, we should be good enough. Um, on the, to the generators are a little different. Some can go to higher frequencies. Others um, can only go to 1.2 gig. All right, so let's move over to the, the, the uh, second piece of equipment we're going to be using. And this is called our microwave sweeper. Now, a microwave sweeper is an oscillator that operates at gigahertz frequencies, right? So, we'll, we'll turn it off just to, uh, to show you the startup process from the beginning. When I turn on the unit, you'll see a bunch of flashing lights, and then it stabilizes. We, there are several different modes for this unit. Many measurements in RF are made over a range of frequencies so we use the sweep oscillator but for us we're going to use a single frequency the single frequency is CW or continuous wave the default is halfway in the middle 655 megahertz so we're gonna now we're gonna switch the frequency after you push CW you can turn um, immediately enter a frequency so I'm going to enter 50 megahertz 50 megahertz so we see the 50 megahertz so now we should have a 50 megahertz signal coming out of our um, generator okay now what you don't know is what is the frequency of the unit of the signal you know the frequency but not the power level so the knob that we see here controls the RF power, and it is uh, it's uncalibrated. It's just a dial. Uh, nominally, 0 dBm, which would be 1 milliwatt, 2 dBm, 4 dBm, 6 dBm is equivalent to 4 milliwatts. 
So we'll turn that on just a little slightly, right? And then we'll look at the reading on our power meter. So here's our power meter doing its self-test. Uh, it's ranging for the signal. Uh, we can press the green button to preset if we want. We don't have zero power, so uh, we want to be careful there. So right now it's looking at 3 dBm. Okay, if you want to adjust it down, you can. Um, it, it's really up to you. It's not a big deal to be that this is a relative number. So 3 dBm is fine. 3 dBm is very close to 2 milliwatts. So we will switch over to milliwatts and see what it says. So we're at 196. Don't worry about getting an exact value. It, it won't matter. As long as it's reasonably stable, uh, that's okay. Jumping around a little bit. Um, so maybe we'll dial it up a little. It ranges every once in a while just to set. All right. So now it is producing 50 megahertz, which is indicated here. And the power level is 2.55 megahertz millivolt milliwatts so what we want to do is first run a calibration or um, checking the oscillator over a range of frequencies so you're going to make a table of frequency versus power this will be a calibration for us to then insert our cable alright so now I'm going to reset for a hundred megahertz so we go to the dial one zero zero megahertz so it's displaying 100 megahertz and we see that the meter says 2.54 milliwatts okay then we'll change it again 200 megahertz and check it 252 so it went down a little bit you will do every 100 megahertz 50 megahertz then 100 megahertz and every 100 megahertz up to the range of the sweeper this sweeper is good to 1300 megahertz or 1.3 gigahertz so what you will see if I reset now to 500 megahertz you will see that the power level changes slightly it is very difficult to maintain exactly the same power level uh, out of the generator so you will just record the difference 2.46 milli milliwatts what will switch to 1 gigahertz and we see 2.4 and the final value 1.3 gigawatt gigahertz and we see 2.43 so you will make a plot and record the data in Excel of frequency versus uh, power level that will be the first measurement now I'm going to change the setup a little here uh, and then we'll we'll do the final uh, measurements 